You okay? Okay, uh, it's my house here. Come on inside. Push inside, yeah. Come. Yeah, you can park it right here. What matter? You run out of gas? Yes. Yeah? Oh, okay. shit. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, I could help you with that gas. <laughs> I got plenty of gas money here. Here, go clo close to the gate. Close the gate for me, please. Cutie pie. <laughs> Come a little closer. Closer. I got a secret to tell you guys. A lot of people ask me this. Maybe, this is a reply to comments. Maybe you could tell people your secrets. Maybe you could start a series about getting in the XXX business. That's how people find your content always. This is a couple days ago. I'm going to address this comment first. Okay. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Shemmy Cash. You can Google me and follow my links below in the link tree. Okay, I produce adult videos, content, and the like, and uh, I do a lot of shit actually, but that's what most people know me for. You know, so if you go and Google me, Shemmy Cash, you'll find all my movies and library of stuff basically. I have like over a thousand movies out there, right? So I'm one of the uh, probably lesser known, if you can call it, porn stars or adult video producers, and a lot of people they ask me, how can I get involved in the business? And the answer is, I don't know, but I can tell you how I got into the business and how I got started. And maybe you guys can learn something like through osmosis of my storytelling to see if it's a right fit for you or whatever. Okay. Now, first of all, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've been in the adult entertainment business since 1997, since my third year of university. And I did go to, you know, I went, I finished high school. I did not finish university. I did three years of college university. I went to actually three different universities and colleges, mostly trying to pass like a calculus two class. I kept failing. And uh, I was studying to be a computer programmer. My major was computer science and my minor was business administration back in school. But I interrupted all this in my third year of schooling because I was making a lot of money with adult websites at the time back in the 1990s or whatever, right? So it was uh, definitely profitable and I don't have any regrets about it by any means at all. You know what I'm saying? So listen to my story and maybe you can decide as the guy says, you know, how do you get into the business or whatever, okay? Now again, okay. Important to note, I do not have any connections. I did this all on my own. I pretty much, uh, how do you say, just free-handed shit, you know? I started going to forums. I started asking questions and building my own sites. And before you know it, I'm in the mix, right? So the very first thing that you probably should do if you wanted to follow on my path is you need to learn how to make a website, a web page. You need to be good at designing a web page. It's good in having a background in this kind of stuff so that you know how to at least piece your own content together. Uh, having a YouTube channel is kind of a so-so start. Anybody with a telephone can make a YouTube channel, but you need to know how to actually code a page in raw HTML with like Notepad or an old primitive editor like Netscape Composer or something. Learn how to make a few web pages first, then focus on making a few adult-oriented pages with whatever your interest or niche or category might be. Um, but you do need to have some kind of background in design, some kind of a nerdy technical design. So if you're not a nerd, you're going to have to hire a nerd like me to like design your page and shit like that. You know, this is where a lot of um, a lot of models and stuff fall flat. You know, they, they need to have they don't even they don't own a camera. They don't own a laptop. And even if they have these things, they don't know how to piece it all together and upload it and buy a domain and hosting and all these sorts of things or whatever. So. 
I would say step number one is learn how to make a website for your own self for even a personal page or some little rinky dink business you could start on your own car wash detailing I don't fucking know hair or anything just make a web page for something I actually got my start making mom and pop websites for people in um, the community where I went to school at or whatever actually you know whatever whatever it was hair salon travel agency I don't care anything just get some experience under your belt in making web pages and doing some SEO and stuff like that so that helps a lot okay speeding up the process okay you probably want to produce your own content nowadays okay since uh, I know they say never say the year but it's 2021 you know post COVID and shit right now so 20 years ago the game was different you know I was making money without even having to get in front of a camera I didn't even own a camera and by the time I started shooting my own content around 2008 or so uh, I was doing so with DV tapes like actual film cassette tapes yeah so you know shit's past that now <laughs> all right this camera I'm using right now is actually my work camera it's a Canon T5i with the special uh, lens that kind of fish eyes shit or whatever you might notice that this isn't a straight lens my hand is actually not this big but it tends to fish eye or make things rounder that are closer this is a good lens for POV it's actually uh, giving you guys all my tricks right now it's a Canon 1018 lens 10-18 millimeter uh, STM lens silent type motor autofocus used about 150 bucks for the lens only on eBay and I recommend purchasing your cameras actually secondhand on Amazon or eBay no sense in paying top dollar whatever as long as it's got a low enough shutter count or whatever right getting ahead of myself here but uh, before you guys even do any of this shit before you start doing anything please number one before you get into the adult industry business or of any type make sure you know what you're getting into realize number two there's usually no reversing or no backing out of it meaning if you want to go and say perhaps become a school teacher or some shit like that in the future or do anything where you work with kids or whatever forget about doing adult content or whatever okay I'm not eligible to be a school teacher tutor shit like that etc etc just because in general people cast adult entertainment and shit in a negative light and they don't want you around their fucking kids and shit like that etc etc even though I've got my own kids who are basically grown now etc it's the world we live in or whatever right so uh, keep that in mind you know keep in mind that you will lose a lot of your family and so-called friends okay make sure that you're okay with that and you can always replace them with better friends and whatever who are not as judgmental or whatever probably don't want these people around your life anyway actually uh, I, I found that actually the adult porn business has been a great filter especially for getting a lot of bullshit people out of your life you know if someone has a problem with what you do to make a living or whatever then uh, it's best that you know that about them and that you uh, you know just deassociate or distance yourself from them you don't have to be buddy buddy with everybody you don't have to be everybody's fucking friend so expect to get a little bit or a lot of resistance and uh, from your family friends community so-called loved ones shit like that you will lose people in doing this it's not like you're going to get a job to become a trash collector or something like that you know you're doing something that people consider to be weird unorthodox immoral etc albeit legal etc you know some people I, I don't get that some people have no problem with you signing up for the Army Navy Air Force Marines and going and getting your nuts blown off in some other fucking foreign land 20,000 miles away from you as they push you out of a helicopter and tell you to shoot everything that moves they got they have no problem with that they'll salute you give you a metal stars and bars but if you take your clothes off and fuck some hose in your neighborhood there's apparently a problem with this you know so I have no idea why people's minds and brains are twisted they probably need to smoke more weed and open up their minds etc but to each their own okay so you will make more enemies and you will make more friends and it's just a cool business I like it a lot and I would not change it for anything I'm very comfortable in my shoes or whatever porn and adult entertainment in general is for mature mature consent mature consenting adults who uh, really don't really give not too many shits about what the outside world thinks you know I'm not a I'm not a thief I'm not a this I'm not a that I run an honest business and I just sell my products and movies and I do what I do but some people have a problem with this some people would rather me be their 
who knows, security guard, janitor, telemarketer, driver, taxi man, delivery man. They want you to do something other than what you're doing. They don't want to see me fucking chicks and getting paid. For whatever reason, the bulk majority of people have a problem with this, okay? Why? Because I guess they're maybe jealous or envious or just hateful or spiteful or just full of fucking hate. You know, there's a whole lot of people on this world that are full of fucking hate. You got hatred in their hearts no matter what you do. Wouldn't matter if I manufactured cardboard boxes. They'd hate on that. You know, fuck you and your boxes, nigga. So it's like that. So you can't please everybody. Realize that. And uh, if you can get over this hump, which is a really, really big hump, then the rest of uh, this adult business shit really should not be much of a problem. Most people have moral and psychological dilemmas as to why they do not uh, do adult you know, whatever, in answering dude's question or whatever. One of the first questions, or one of the first questions that I have for people, actually, when they ask me, uh, why do you do porn, or how do you do porn, and what do you feel about this? I ask them in turn, why are you not doing porn and making money and doing what I'm doing? If you think what I'm doing is so fucking fly, which I think it kind of is, you know, get to fuck porn stars, fly all over the country, here and there, shoot cool movies, meet cool people, conventions, trade shows, top floor of this, that, the other. It's a great lifestyle a lot of times, you know? I've, I've done a lot of shit, man. I've, I've been around this motherfucking globe. It's nice, right? And I wonder why wouldn't you want to do that too? Oh, I know. You're worried about what somebody in your zip code or postal code thinks. <laughs> I think that's what the case is. You're worried about what your mama thinks. My mama watches this channel, by the way. Hi, mom. You're worried about what your daddy thinks. You're worried about what your kid thinks. About what your bitch wife thinks. What about your best friend thinks? This. Why are you worried about what these people think? Just go and do what you're gonna do, man. You know? Fuck. You know? Now realize this too, okay? When you do choose to do what I've done, say you want to you wanna be a porn star, you want to be shimmy cash, you want to go and do this, whatever, okay? That means you got to put yourself out there, okay? Now, when I first started doing videos, I was doing what they call POV, point of view, first person camera, meaning I hold the camera, basically flip it around from what I am right now, and uh, you don't really see much of me other than from the chest down or waist down or whatever. The video is about the girl. The girl is the main focus of the video. And that's what they call a POV video. Um, I still do those a lot of times. But mostly now I'm, uh, you know, a higher camera person or put the camera off to a side. And I'm the main character in the movies or whatever that I create or whatever now. It's really almost like the girl is almost secondary, actually. So uh, when you sh the, the beautiful part about, I think, about making movies that I enjoy is I get to shoot and direct and determine the outcome of how shit's gonna come out and uh you know m most of the time i'm pretty satisfied with the end result or whatever but at the end of the day i'm the boss i have the final say i generally have the final edit like you know 90 percent of the time unless i've licensed the shit to someone else or whatever then they rechop it up into something else it's another story in itself but i mean it's like i pretty much have 90% or more creative control in what I do. There are a few rules that you need to abide by when you do shoot content or whatever. You should know about various uh, obscenity laws and the place you live. Some certain countries you can or can't do this or that or the other. You know, it varies. That It may even be illegal where you live. You might have to go somewhere else and do it. Or do it in privacy and don't fucking tell anybody, eh? Whatever it takes, man. But really, that's uh, that's really the major hurdle for most people getting into the business. The information is out there. You can go and join forums. Uh, they're free, if you don't know. There's might be private or members-only forums. I, I would suggest for new up-and-coming webmasters, look at a forum called GFY. There's another one called XBiz. Uh, there's plenty of adult webmaster type of forums. But don't expect for anybody to hold your hand and just okay i'm gonna i'm gonna hook you up i'm gonna make you a star and show you what to do and who to meet ain't nobody gonna do all that shit nobody's ever done that for me and those kind of hookups like don't really exist okay you got to already be skilled in shooting your own content and 
eventually, eventually, once you have some good quality samples and work out there, you could subcontract your shit out to other studios and websites or whatever. Now, I shoot my own content, but I also shoot content for other websites. I'm like, uh, I'm like a cameo on over a dozen other fucking series of websites or whatever, too. Generally, whenever they need a fucking black guy with a clean test who will show up on time without a whole bunch of fucking attitude, I get that call. Okay, I'm, I am who I am or whatever, right? Some of the, like the personal sacrifices I've made for being in film and this and that and the other is I fucking I work out a lot more than I used to. Okay, I used to be pretty fat when I started doing my movies like ten years ago. I think I was about shit, man, like at least two hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, and now I'm like one sixty something most of the time. So. This is what it is. I'm like 90 pounds lighter or whatever, but I run more, I work out more, I do cardio more, and I... You kind of got to be in tip-top shape, but since I'm a runner anyway, it doesn't really matter. I pretty much work out to run and shit anyway. So, it is what it is. Um, you can't be shy, that's for sure. Uh, it takes. It might take a lot of people some time to get used to being in front of the camera and just having a camera present and in front of them. Okay, I, I suggest maybe even doing a YouTube channel like this might be a good start for a lot of you. This is why this this YouTube shit here is actually a pretty good like transition for me for just staying fresh with doing camera shit or whatever. Because if I don't shoot a video for a minute, you do start to get rusty if you don't use your skills, just like any other foreign language or whatever. Okay, I'm sidetracking and deviating. Back to your story, bro. Uh, the comment, what again? Start a series about getting into the XXX business. Yeah, um, shit, man. You're asking for a, that's a very generic question, but I would say this is best. You you need you need my one-on-one -on -one kind of consulting for that kind of shit. There's, I don't know anything about you or your skill level or your girls or if you're a girl or a guy or any of this shit. So. I suggest you contact me personally. You will have to pay for my time. There's some links in the description probably in this link tree stuff I'll be putting in the corner there or whatever. So you could actually buy my time. So how about you just pay for an hour of my time or whatever and I'll be happy to hold your hand, answer your questions and help you get started on like some kind of uh, sharing basis like that. And I can probably help save you money and speed up the process more than you trying to blindly feel in the dark like, you know, Ray Charles and fucking uh, Stevie Wonder leading each other, blind leading the blind. So let me use my 20 years of experience and help you, okay? There'll be a way for you to buy my time if you need consulting or I could tell you where you should get started, what you should buy, who you should be with, how you can book models, how you can do this and pretty much replicate what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm I'm not a genius, by the way. I've just been doing this shit for a long time, and I kind of know what I do. But um, this is not the adult business. Adult video business is not like an exclusive club. It's not like the stone cutters on The Simpsons. The mafia doesn't own it. The so-called Jews don't own the business or industry. I mean, there's all kinds of like weird perception. The Russian mafia does this and that, and I'm like, whoa, fuck. You know, I'm just. I'm me. I'm a black Ethiopian living in Canada, okay? I'm in the back of my restaurant right now, okay? I still run my sites and shoot movies and shit like that and travel here and there and whatever, but there's nobody above me. You don't, there's nobody coming to knock on my door and tell me, hey, shimmy, shut it down, whatever, shit like that. It's, it's a very independent business, okay? All you basically need is web hosting, a camera, a computer, and your model, which could be yourself, it could be your girlfriend, your wife, your whatever the fuck you're doing, okay? Your content is yours. You need to get experience with creating content if you want to sell your content. Now, as far as monetizing your content, there's like a hundred different ways you can do that shit, okay? I suggest you have your own website. You need to contact me about this, by the way. You need your own website. You need all your social setup, all your Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that bullshit or whatever. Uh, you need a clips for sale store, you need a mini vid store, only fans, loyal fans, whatever. And there's always new shit coming out all the time. Some some people, uh, girls, a lot of girls do live cam shows. I don't do that shit or whatever. But I mean, it's like there's a million ways you can monetize and sell your time and create yourself and basically turn yourself into a product, okay? There's premium channels you can sell your content on. Uh, there's like pay-per-view stuff. There's 
there's tons of ways to monetize your shit, okay? Now, getting started, you might only make a little bit of money, okay? But if you do it for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, the shit stacks up. Just remember that movies sell forever. Like the rapper Too Short said, don't stop rapping is the key to success. I ain't never quitting making movies, man. I've had people come to me and say, hey, Shimmy, when you gonna retire? You know, you're 42 years old. When you still making them movies, nigga? I'm like, yeah, and I'm still selling them too, nigga. And there's a new update coming on Friday. <laughs> Word to your mama. She might be on it, you know? So it is what it is, man. Um, I'm not stopping to make this shit. Ride it till the wheels fall off, is what I say. Okay? Do you think I'm going to just stop at a 1,000 movies? Do you think I'm going to stop at 10,000 movies? No. I have no plans or intentions on quitting because I enjoy what I do. This is not like some shit job that I'm forced to go to. This is, this is my life. It's what I do. It's my hobby. It's constructive and creative. And I'm always thinking up new ideas for movies. And there's always a... Seems to be a steady stream, non-stop flow of just pussy just girl, girls flying in here and there and whatever so I do what I do I enjoy what I do and that's why I do it it's kind of cool it's kind of fun and I'm just used to doing it I can't really imagine my life without it or any other way okay anytime I've stopped doing porn and I've had to get you know so-called real jobs to go and support my family and myself and this and that it's like my life has been in a tailspin I've been those shit jobs the security guard the truck driver the convenience store worker, the taxi driver, the fucking retail man, whatever. Shit I don't want to do, okay? It's a very bad idea to live an unfulfilled life and do things that you don't want to do. That's like the ultimate, it's like the ultimate blues, man. You got to spend your time doing what the fuck you want to do, okay? If I want to fuck porn stars, I got to find a way to do this and make it profitable or at least break even initially, get some, get some of my fucking money back or whatever, but at least I'm not miserable in doing it. And I think all that actually helps to keep me young and young at heart and everything else. I don't have a soul-crushing job with a bunch of toxic-ass co-workers that I fucking hate. I enjoy doing what I do. Every time I log into my site and I fuck with my stats and do a new update or film a new girl, put in, you know, it's like... I love this shit. I really do. So you should always, as they say, do what you love. Well, I love fucking porn stars. I, I, do, I like making movies with girls. I like, I like this camera shit. You know, I just kind of think I have a knack for being uh, somewhat of an entertainer, man. I joke about this shit all the time. Black people are athletes and entertainers. Uh, whoever hit me up here on the YouTube, though, with the comment, it was a good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, you got to tell me more about yourself, too. All right, like just for instance, just because you have an idea of, you know, some con type of content you might want to shoot, maybe say you and your wife or some shit like that, just for instance, or whatever. That's cool. There's a market for that, but it might not be a big fucking market. It might be a micro small market. You might have to be like me. Like I started out and I still do a bunch of what they call micro niche sites, which are like shit that only a certain number of people search for and shit. I'm giving you guys all the gold right now, by the way. Listen up, listen up, listen up. Careful, okay? If you have an idea of something that you want to shoot, okay, you need to go into Google Analytics, use their keyword tool or some other search engine keyword spy tool and find out how many people per month are searching for your term. This applies to YouTube channels as well, too. But I don't really fuck with YouTube like this just yet. I should be, though. But uh, you need to see that there's a demand. A certain 50,000, 100,000 people per month need to be searching for, I don't know, uh, girls with naked girls with running shoes. One of my personal favorites or whatever. But I mean, you know, it, whatever your small micro niche might be. For instance, my, my ones that my major ones that I make most money with are actually Native American Indian girls and Dominican Republic girls. Look at the sites, Indian girls and Taticos. Those are both me. I'm the main character on them, etc. And there's not too many other people that have done this better than me. And it's a it's a site that's difficult to replicate. You know, there's not too many bilingual English, Spanish porn sites with the black guy, etc., etc. So. It depends on what your niche is, okay? Make sure that your niche that you're shooting is profitable. Uh, the most popular, just so that you guys know, <laughs> look up the top searches for adult terms, like on X videos or Pornhub or something like that, okay? Usually the top number one search term is blonde. The number two search term is big tits. 
and number three is interracial i think number four is asian and so far on down the list latina anal this that and the other or whatever but the, the top three blonde big tits and interracial so basically by using this formula <laughs> Interracial means any content with a black man and a white woman. So if you are a black man, if you have black skin, or at least as brown as me, etc., you have an advantage in the porn field, okay? There is a desire. You're an object. Me, I, as a black man or whatever. I am an object of fetishiza fetishization, I guess you could say, where people search for this shit. I have no idea why people search for black, black cock, black on blonde, black on white, interracial. I have no clue. I actually don't really search for it that much myself, but a large number of people do. And remember, the internet is not just comprised of people in your city or your country, okay? This is a worldwide thing, okay? Most people that I know that search for the word search term blonde, if you look it up, they're actually in many of the Middle Eastern so-called Arab nations or whatever. They like blonde women over there probably because there aren't very many of them. You know, it's considered some exotic thing or whatever, whereas here, blonde girls are fucking everywhere, etc. So. It depends on what it is, but remember, look at the demographic of who might be purchasing your content, who or who has the funds to purchase your content or whatever, and uh, just just consider, you know, who's gonna ask yourself the question, who's gonna pay for this shit? Is someone gonna buy this? If I get, if I spend, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand dollars on making a movie or two or whatever, then who's gonna buy it? Are you gonna get your money back? Are you going to get your money back for the flight, the hotel, the model's rate, fee, your tests, this, that, and the other? Speaking of tests, by the way, your tests are going to run about $180 to, to I think they're over $200 now with the new COVID test or whatever. But uh, if, you, if you're in the booking industry, another you know, inside secret, you go, go to your... Uh, your local lab test place there are some designated just for this adult stuff or whatever and they'll do your tests and all this and that and you'll probably meet up with some other talent and producers there a lot of people leave their business cards and stuff like that at the uh the lab place and there's labs in california vegas florida uh, i don't think there's any in new york actually at the moment it's usually just vegas and florida at the moment but Oh, yeah, there are a few more in Canada as well, too. Just recently, I think there's some in Toronto. I have to look it up. But, yeah, they're, they're out there. Okay, so there is a budget. There is a cost. There's a... Uh, how could you say? There, there's a definitely a barrier to entry to doing this, all right? Don't think that you're going to do this and start shooting movies with your phone and shit like that. You need to get a camera and lights. You need money to hire models, etc. You know, don't think you could do it without money. When I first started doing this, I, I have no credit. I'm coming off of a fucking divorce. I'm broke. I'm doing whatever shit jobs I can do. I'm working like event brand ambassador, work at a fucking parade festival, anything. Shopping malls, a guy with the clipboard survey. I started doing this and I started making like movies, what I call basically $100 movies, where I was making like basically clips for sale movies. I was paying local girls 100 to $250 at the time for just making movies for selling on clips. You know, sometimes, sometimes it wasn't even all explicit porn. It was just like uh, girls doing domestic work. Uh, there's various niches that people could do. I've done like spanking videos and shit that, you know, I just experimented with a lot of stuff. If you look at my old clip store, you'll see all sorts of weird and wacky ideas I've played around with. I've played around with hypno, spanking, this, that. A lot of stuff until I actually found my groove and what I'm comfortable in doing or whatever, right? So I'm very much so myself in all my things now, even if I'm a character sometimes. But I, I tend to just keep shit authentic. You should definitely film the type of content that you're comfortable with and that you actually enjoy, and that way it'll come more easy and natural to you. I think that's a really good idea. And uh, also, the more content you shoot, the more comfortable you get holding the camera and being in front of the camera and just used to being having a fucking camera on around you. Okay, a lot of a lot of uh, first time first time video girls or whatever they've never had lights on them or a big camera on them, and they, you can see they kind of freak out, big fucking eyes and nervous and shit like that and whatever and that comes across on the film where once you've been doing this shit for a while it's uh the cameras are invisible it wouldn't matter if there were 10 other people in this room behind me watching me doing this right now i'd still be feeling talking and vibing the same i have a pretty good mind or maybe it's my autism or some shit that lets me just tune shit out but i'm really good at just blocking shit out this except for what's right in front of me like i say it doesn't matter if i'm butt ass naked in a room full of people it don't matter so anyway yeah 
hope that answers your question, man. <laughs> so, anyway, like I said, you probably have a lot of individualized questions. I don't know what your current skill level is. Okay, I don't know if you know how to fuck with the camera or a computer. I don't know if you're shy around girls. Some niggas freeze up around like porn star so-called quality girls that are pretty much done up with airbrush makeup, etc. I mean, I don't know what level you might be a pimp or you might be socially awkward. I don't know, man. Either way, you can make it work, but I mean, I have to know like where you're at in order to see where you're at. And then I have to question you, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this? Do you want to do this for money? Might be easier ways to make money without so much heat or problems for yourself. You got to consider that too. Don't think that all this comes without no problems, man. You're going to have to deal with uh, all kinds of motherfucking baby daddies and punk motherfuckers and, you know, ICAC, Dorian A. Peters type of motherfuckers following you around the world and uh, shit like that. As long as you're prepared to deal with the task force and litigation and all types of just, you know, whole problems or whatever, you probably shouldn't get into the business. Now, if that shit doesn't scare you or deter you or bother you, then by all Okay, back on. So I just ran out of video card time or something. But like, as I was just saying on the, on the, on the clip there, yeah, make sure that you're cut out for doing this. Make sure you have the cojones, the testicles, the balls for doing this. Because that's the real reason why most people don't do it. You know, it's almost like I could present them with a platter with a million fucking dollars on it in this hand right here. Imaginary or whatever. Imagine a million dollars in my hand here. And imagine on this hand, someone's thinking like, oh, well, I don't want to disappoint my family, mom, kids, whatever. So fuck that million dollars, even though I could use it to help my family and better my thing. <laughs> We're not doing that today. We're not playing those kind of games, all right? I like to travel the world, okay? I like to race cars, I like to play with bikes, I like to go on airplanes and swim every day and smoke weed and hot tubs and porn stars and shit like that. So it's what I like to do, okay? I don't like doing this 9 to 5 shit. I never did. I haven't for over 20 years. I'm not cut out to do that. Find someone else to take out your trash, mop your floors, clean your toilets, protect your building. It's not me. I don't want to do that. And if you hire me to do that kind of job, I'll probably do a substandard job at it. Because <laughs> I'm probably doing it under duress and don't really want to fucking be there. You know? That sucks, right? If you hire someone for a job, they should definitely want to be there and their mind should be 100% focused on whatever if you're paying them for their time. I agree. So I probably wouldn't be a very good employee unless I totally would like say like, hey, I'm serious about this. I'm going to do my best to do this and bam, you know, but it is what it is. All right. So I hope that answers part of your question. Please hit me up privately if you need help or assistance and you're willing to pay for my time. Wink, wink, because, you know, I got time where I need to be doing shit, too. Instead of answering your question right now, I should be out there, like, filming another girl or something. You're updating my site, or people are asking me, well, oh, this needs to be worked on on the site. Well, it's me, man. I got to do the customer service. I got to film it. I got to fuck. I got to find the next one. I got to upload it and deal with all the problems, okay? But all that bread and cheese come back to me. All the fans come back to me. All the subscribers come back to me, Shimmy Cash. So that's me, that's my story, and uh, I'm gonna keep filming movies, and I'm available for bookings to other studios and this and that. I'm available for pretty much most people's projects. If you just tell me what you're fucking with and tell me what the rate is and et cetera, et cetera, I'll be happy to help you out. You know, I've done, like I say, I'm in cameos on all kinds of people's shit. A lot of times, if it's like more of an established studio, I actually often volunteer. You know, whenever they need a black guy, etc. That's why I'm in so many fucking movies. You know, I volunteer to go on the set as talent, do the job for them, and then I get to meet a lot of the other girls or whatever too, and then I hire them on the side for my own shit. I also use agents, talent agent, model agent, etc. to help find and bring other girls in. You know, usually I'll have the last video girl bring in the next video girl and pay them a referral fee as you might have heard on the news about me. <laughs> okay, I'm efficient, okay? This is what I like to do, man. So, I basically found, to answer dude's question here, man, look, I found something that I'm comfortable in doing and I found a way to monetize it, okay? It is what it is. As long as you like what you're doing, by all means, don't let nobody stop what you're doing and keep cranking them episodes out. I say this over and over to people, once you get started, please don't stop. You know, keep shifting, keep hitting the gas, go, go, go.
Make the next one better. Make it into a series. Just keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Eventually your shit gets better and eventually you get something that's going to hit or stick or you're going to be on the news like me, etc. Then they're going to blow you up big. So you just got to keep putting your shit out. If you're a rapper, keep rapping, keep making albums, etc. Keep making tracks, keep making songs, keep creating, keep uploading. And a lot of people, they have so much shit on their computers, they haven't even uploaded or decided what to do with it. So I'm telling you right now, get yourself a domain, a .com, whatever, that'll be like 10 bucks. Get yourself some cheap hosting, HostGator or anything cheap just to get started, whatever, a couple bucks a month. Learn how to upload, do your own page, and make a basic web page and start going from there. Okay, it's the best way to do this. Feel free to reach out to me once you have taken these very basic first few steps. You've decided what kind of content you want to film, you've registered a domain, and you've got hosting. You spend about, tw after you've spent that first 20 bucks, then hit me up. Then you can buy my time for like, I don't know, man, let's just say a dollar a minute or something like this, one hour minimum. Let's just do something like that, all right? Initially. Okay, just to get the ball rolling and to help you out. Okay, that's what I could suggest to you if you want to help doing your thing or whatever. This offer applies only for right now, whatever the year is, 2021. I know a lot of people see this shit in the future and be like, oh, you said that was 60 bucks. Well, currently that's what it is. The shit's likely going to increase just like inflation, just like the COVID, right? So anyway... I hope this answers your question, man. This is how you get into the business. You know, it's like asking a comedian, how did they, uh, how do I become a comedian? I think that was actually a Richard Pryor joke, actually. I think he said, well, first you drop out of school and you start telling jokes in a pool hall and then you end up here. That's pretty much it, yeah. So don't expect this shit to accidentally happen. How about that? Nobody knocked on my door and was like, hey, Shimmy, you know, you want to be a porn star? Like, nothing like that, man. You know? And realistically, it helps if you're a bit of a nerdy motherfucker, actually. If you happen to like uh, video games, comics, anime, you happen you have to kind of like love media in general in order to do this kind of shit. You know, like in school, I was the guy that I always drew comics, comic squares, like the little nine squares or whatever, like like you'd see in the newspaper or whatever. And uh, I just liked that shit. I liked drawing cartoons. Uh, later on, I evolved once I learned a little bit of programming, you know, C++, Unix, shit like that. I was making little video games in college or whatever, computer games, and from there it evolved to porn. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But you've always got to start creating something. So if you've already started either just drawing pictures or making a podcast or making a channel, you could easily take those same talents and turn them into adult video and whatever and monetize your content. And more people were interested in seeing your adult content as this channel proves <laughs> than to hearing me rant or talk about social problems and this and that. People want to see me fuck, etc. They don't want to hear me talk about all kinds of social problems and I think this about and the black people should do this. They're like, no, no, no. Just put a white girl on the screen with them or an Asian girl or whatever or all of the above <laughs> and have a party. And that's what people pay to see. Okay, people don't want to hear or, hear or listen to all sorts of hate and problems and arguments and whatever. People got their own fucking problems. I realize that. So... You know, turning yourself into an object of entertainment is something that you have to be comfortable with, okay? This is difficult for a lot of people, you know. Um, you know, I, I think that's why I started this video off so, so much asking so many questions is because, like, I had a very pretty much strict upbringing. You know, I, I can almost, like, recite the Bible book of Psalms from memory, etc., very strict Bible, Baptist, Christian upbringing, etc. And that's probably contributed to a lot of the porn stuff. A, a, lot, a lot of porn people actually had hev heavy religious upbringings. There's many ex-Jehovah's Witness and uh, what do they call them? Uh, Mimonites and uh, fucking, uh, not Amish, Mormon, you know, whatever extreme religious branch you might have been from or whatever growing up, that's usually a precursor to doing porn. Uh, along with, I would say, is any kind of sports in school like I've been on the track team since 10th grade etc uh, but yeah it's like you kind of have to have some kind of like I said religion or sports or athletics type of background is usually a good precursor I, I know many girls who are actually um, figure skaters uh, gymnastics uh, they've done a lot of shit I mean, I'm a runner track guy uh, 
a lot of the a lot of the dudes are like you know bodybuilder type of fucks or UFC fighter type of guys. But in general, if you have some kind of athletic background and you are a little bit of nerdy or whatever, you'd probably be good as a porn star or in the business to at least be in front of the camera or behind the camera. I think I think it's a I think it's kind of a good idea to take care of your body or at least have some kind of a healthy training regimen for yourself or whatever. I don't know. You know, you. I, I think the other thing about it too is that if you're in front of the camera a lot more, you're more conscious of how you appear to other people. Since most people don't have a camera in front of them all the time, they don't have the luxury of seeing how they look. I play myself back almost every fucking day, so I'm like, oh shit, I look different today. I should change something. Huh, shit like that. You know, you get this from hanging out with models and porn star girls and shit all the time. You know, they're always constantly in their phone, mirror, this, that, taking vitamin, this, supplement, that. I mean, they're I picked up a lot of the shit from them. Okay, it is what it is. It's through osmosis. If you have, if you have models and porn stars prancing around all the fucking time, you tend to pick up on their habits. I buy their same toothpaste, their vitamins, their this, their that. Why? Because I look at them. Their skin looks like it's baby smooth, etc. I want to know what they're doing, so I do what they do. Which this includes, such as teeth whitening, uh, your Crest White Strips, your uh, Burt's Bees toothpaste, collagen vitamins, uh, hyaluronic acid, all types of shit that's up in the cabinet or whatever, right? And lots and lots of weed smoking. <laughs> but you know, it, it, it all this shit helps to keep me young, man. I do what they do. I take care of myself. I get massages every now and then. I get a pedicure, manicure, shit like that. Um, if you're good, if you're pretty good at taking care of your body and your health or whatever, I think you'd be pretty good for being an on-screen character or doing anything or whatever, right? But uh, self-care is actually very important. It's very important. Yeah. So anyway, that's all, that's all I got to say. I'm ranting. This is a very long video, but it was a very good question. I'd like more detailed. Uh, you know, I'll just give me more details and I can give you a better answer. So again, hit me up on the link tree links below. I'm easily contactable, easily reachable. Just give me a little bit of time to get back to you and we could arrange some type of time where you could buy a block of my time and I'll be happy to help you out, hook you up and give you whatever resources you might need to help you get started if you are serious, okay? I assume you are. So anyway, I'm Shenny Cash. I hope this has been helpful and useful to you. If you found this information good, give me a share or a like and subscribe if you like okay shimmy cash google me look me up check out all my movies okay thanks for watching ciao hey so i was just about to go shut the computer off but i have one more question to answer right youtube person says uh in response to the last video running girls number two ain't nothing like pimp in too short <laughs> the song on it more chocolate runners vicky says well, the problem there, Vicky, is that most black girls are not long-distance runners, um, unless they're Ethiopian or Kenyan. I happen to be half Ethiopian, which is why I really, really like long-distance running. I'm actually wearing my running shoes right now, if you can't tell. My Flyknit RNs. Jeez. Very nice. Highly recommended. They're less than seven ounces. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'm a runner by default. I am naturally attracted to any girl that has the ability for long distance running ability and capability. This is probably less than 1% of